Guys, I missed you. I don't know if you missed me, but I missed you enough for the both of us, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> hi, welcome back to my channel. My friend was visiting, so I didn't make a video last week. And I was also sick. I don't know. There's a lot to unpack. But, um, I wanted to talk about this concept that my, my teacher, my voice teacher introduced to me the other day when we were in our lesson. And... It goes back to, I, I feel like this can apply to so many things. For me, it's specifically with singing and and what I'm, I'm trying to pursue, but I think it can apply to any sort of situation where you have imposter syndrome. Because I think that's what it kind of stems from, is the feeling of imposter syndrome of like, I don't belong here, or like, I don't, I do, I'm not capable of this thing, right? So... We were talking about this the same there's this one register of my voice where for some reason I think because of what I listen to or the way I speak or whatever, but for some reason this the high ranges of my voice, like the uh high plane, the high parts of my voice, like right through the night like the high vo parts of my voice are like fine right the high parts of my voice are, are very easy for me to access for whatever reason and maybe it has always been like that but it is like that now so like for me it's easier to do like stuff like that all those notes are easier than like if i were to have to sing like don't make me over now that i can't make it without you like for whatever reason singing it's easier than over even though over is like lower you you get what I'm saying anyway so my lower mids are hard for me because they just are and they require more commitment from your body right and and the way she described it to me because she has she was saying that she had the same issue with those like powerful lowish kind of notes and she said that what it feels like is that it feels like it's too big for your body. It feels like, not that you don't think you can do it, cause you know you can do it, you've done it a few times, but it feels like when you're picturing it, it doesn't belong to you. Like it's such a big sound and a big feeling that you don't feel like fits in your own body. If that makes sense. Oh my God. Like a note that's like, that's big and full and powerful. You can see belonging to other people, like people you look up to and idolize, right? And you can see it in them and you know it belongs to them. But when you picture it coming out of your own body, because that's what singing is, it's like your own body is the instrument, right? When you picture it coming out of your own body, it doesn't fit because because it doesn't feel like your body is powerful enough for that or it feels like the sound is too big for you it's bigger than you and it's not something that belongs to you because if it belonged to you you could just like whip it out it would be the same as like it would be as comfortable as me singing like like all whispery like how i like to sing before you know because i associate that small sound with me and so now that I'm trying to make this big sound and feel comfortable with this big sound, it doesn't feel right because it doesn't feel like my body is powerful enough to sustain that or to hold it or to own it and claim it as my own, you know? And that was like, it was the most, it's so weird whenever you have a feeling and you don't know how to describe it, but you know exactly how it feels. And then someone says how it feels and then you're like, yup, that's it. That's like the moment I had yesterday. It was just, it was so crazy to hear it to hear it repeated back to me exactly how I was feeling and and so she was saying that when she was in therapy talking about it because you know we love therapy darling we all need a good therapist okay um she was saying that her therapist said to envision the version of yourself that has that sound and that that sound belongs to 
the version of yourself that when they think about that sound they don't think it's too big for them or they don't think it it doesn't fit with who they are you know the version of you and it doesn't have to be who you are now because that can be overwhelming to because you can't picture it belonging to you as you are now obviously or else it would already be accessible to you like that but if you can picture a version of you like visually see it you but from the future or whatever just a different version of you who has that in this case that sound who can make that sound, sustain that sound, feel that sound, hold that sound in their body, feel confident and comfortable with that sound in their body, sustaining it, doing it for short periods of time, doing it out of nowhere, doing it on the spot, doing it under high pressure situations. When you can see that version of yourself and know that that version of yourself exists, it's the most like calming and liberating feeling for whatever reason. And I don't know if it feels like that for you if you try it, but for me, when I started doing that, I started picturing the version of myself that could sustain these mids that are like, and like that's a good example of a note that's like ch challenging for me, which is weird because a note an octave higher than that would be easy for me. It's weird, but when I picture the version of myself, I see her having that sound and being able to hold that the power of that sound and it, and it not overpowering her and it not being too big for her it fitting with her and it being it being expected to come from her and like oh yeah that makes sense she would be able to hold that that note and that sound and that frequency within her you know when i picture her i picture her her strength and her confidence and her calmness and her self-assuredness and her trust in herself and in in the source um and you know and that almost takes the pressure off of off of me because i'm no longer beating myself up for not having that now i'm no longer doing that i'm no longer wondering if it's something wrong with me or if i'll never be able to get there or da da da, -da because i see this version of me literally the same me but it's just different and she already has done it. She already has it. So now that I can see that, anything you can see is real. And it's already happened, but you just haven't gotten there yet. But now that I see her, I know that it it has happened already. I just, I just haven't made it there yet. And that to me is so comforting. You know, it's the most comforting feeling to, to see it and to feel how she feels and to be able to watch her do it. And I don't know. Maybe this would be hard if you don't have as vivid and disturbing at times of an imagination. But if you can push yourself to do this, close your eyes and visualize it or just like picture it or try to feel the feeling of that person that doesn't have to be you but is you. It just, I don't know, it's something really special and and empowering and inspiring and and it also, it takes away this idea of like, that's for them, not me. Like that's for the people I look up to. That's for the, that's for those artists that I love, but it's not for me, right? It takes that away because you see a version of yourself that is what you want and it is, you know, what you're striving for and it's you, it's not someone else. It's, and, and it takes away the need to constantly be comparing and referencing back to artists that you like and making sure am I doing it like them or how did they sound when they did it or, or, you know, what was their placement? What was their breathing? What was their, you know, are they in mix or are they in full voice? Are they belting? What is it? You know, it, it takes all that away because you're no longer comparing yourself to a standard because you already are the standard. So you're watching yourself do it, knowing that you're going to eventually get to that point. And you can kind of leave the other references and the other people behind, which is ultimately what you want to do as an artist. You know, you, it's great to take inspiration from people and from things because that's going to make your art that much more rich. But there comes a point where you have to be your own artist. You can't, there's already someone else. The people you love have already existed. So what would be the point of replicating what they've done or who they are or how they sound, you know? So it helps in that way too, in the, in the idea of just being an individual and not being afraid to 
to stand on your own feet, you know, as, as an artist and relying on yourself and, and being proud and inspired by yourself. Being, I've never been inspired by myself until doing this and being able to see that future version of myself and being able to feel her, her presence. That is more inspiring than any artist that I've ever looked up to. Just doing this alone has given me more inspiration because it's me that I'm inspired by, not anyone else. And and even if you're not a singer or whatever, I, I think this can apply to so many things. Like, even for acting, I can see the version of myself that has already filmed the first season of the show that she's a series regular on. Like, I can feel her, I can feel her thoughts, I can feel what she's worried about, I can feel that she is so grateful and excited, but she's also missed out on some family stuff and seeing some of her friends and she's very nervous because you know she's been shooting consecutively and she wants the show to be good and she wants to have her next job lined up and and she wants to make sure she's doing the best work in each scene that she possibly can and she's spending all her time memorizing and she's so focused but she's a little bit lonely because she's so focused but she's making friends and meeting new people but she feels weird and people are starting to treat her different like i can see it all and i can feel it all and it's not me imagining what it's probably like for someone else. It's me seeing it as myself. Just a different version. A future version. And it's so interesting. And I can feel the calmness and the sense of confidence and self-assuredness that, that the Chloe now doesn't, doesn't have yet, you know. And that's because I'm not them yet. I'm me. But they exist because it's already happened and it was already written and it's just it's just really cool and 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 I think that even if you're in whatever circumstance you're in if you do feel those feelings of like insecurity and doubt and and just lack of confidence and lack of faith I think I think self-sabotage can come creeping in you know you don't think you're worthy of these things you don't think these things are possible for you you haven't seen it yet so so it can be easy for you to e either not try at all, give up, succumb to your fears and the fears of people around you that they're projecting onto you, you know. Um, it can be easy to feel like you're an imposter and like you don't belong in the situations that you're in. And when you get to the opportunities to choke because you don't think that you're worthy of that and it doesn't make sense to you. That's what, that's what it ultimately comes down to is like, whether or not in your brain it makes sense for you to receive what you want period that's what it comes down to like you can want you can want the thing you can put all the work into getting the thing but if in your brain it doesn't make sense for you to get the thing that you're working for how are you gonna get it if deep down you can't picture yourself actually physically there and you can't imagine so vividly the exact thoughts you're gonna be having when you're there, the exact worries, the exact things you're excited about or nervous about or what you're preparing for next. If you can't feel that, it's gonna be hard for you to tap into the energy of the, the version of you that's already there, right? Because there's different, we go through different phases as people and different, you know, phases of our energy. And when you're ready to expand, you're going to start feeling the things that future you is already feeling. The future you that has the things that you want. You have to feel what she feels. And and I, I heard about this concept a while ago. Like everyone will talk about like manifesting and like manifesting is such a overused to me gross term. But I, I, but I still value what the concept of it is because obviously I know that the concept of of it is is real is tangible because it's something that's been so real for me you know starting this journey of like whatever I'm trying to do since when I was 17 like some of the things I've done and I've accomplished and I've witnessed or even been in the rooms for were things that I wanted so desperately in the past and I made it here right and I'm not where I want to be but now I know, now I can like feel, it's weird. Now I can like feel her, the her that's already there. And that's weird. So 
I guess my challenge for you is to take the time to visualize the version of yourself that's already where that's already arrived feel what they feel try to think about what they're thinking about be excited about what they're excited about be worried about what they're worried about be nervous about what they're nervous about be be anticipating the next move for them you know all the things that you do naturally where you are now do it as if you're already there and see how it feels and let me know how it goes and um i've been talking for a long time so i'm gonna go but thank you for watching my video and if you want to subscribe subscribe and i just love you a lot and i'm really grateful for this platform and the people that do watch so yeah see you later bye look at the roses on the floor i don't want to talk about it or do i